John was put into prison. Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Why was John put into prison? And why did Jesus wait until John had been put into prison before he came on the scene proclaiming the gospel? Well, John was put into prison because he told the truth. He told the king at that time, King Herod, the truth. He told the truth to the face and said to the king, it is not right for you to marry your brother's wife, Herodias. And for this, John was put into prison. And not only was he put into prison, he was killed in the process. And now, you would have thought that Jesus, on hearing this news, will be terrified and frightened of going into that region. But Jesus goes into that region as bold as a lion, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven and saying, repent. Of course, John has done his bit by telling the king that you are not supposed to take your brother's wife as a wife. It is immoral. You are not supposed to do that. Now, Jesus came robbing salt to the wound. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. When we are called by God, we are commanded to speak truth to injustice. We are called to speak truth to immoral behavior. We are called to speak truth whether people like it or not. <laughs> Make no mistake, people will stay away from you because you tell them what they are doing wrong. People will be offended because you point out to them what they are doing wrong. And be aware of the price that comes of telling the truth. For John, he lost his life. So be aware of the consequences that comes from telling the truth. But we shouldn't be afraid to voice the truth out. Let's move on to the next section of our reading. Jesus comes into the region, began to walk by the Sea of Galilee, Sees Simon and Andrew, and you're actually getting the icing on the cake from this sermon. Jesus comes and meets Simon and Andrew. They are actually in the middle of their profession, they are casting nets into the sea. And if, if you know any fisherman, that is a crucial time of leaving your net, leaving your boat, and following this strange man who comes on the coast and say, follow me. <laughs> Jesus calls them in the middle of their profession. Who is this guy? When I'm in the middle of my engineering meeting, when I'm in, in the middle of going to take my train, the underground train, to take passengers from Leighton to Stanmore, when I'm just about to board my flight to pilot passengers to Frankfurt, who is this guy when I'm about to have my dinner calling me to follow him? Who is this guy 
when I'm about to operate on this patient, calling me to follow him. Who is this guy? The Bible says they left their nets in the middle of casting their nets for a catch for fish. They left that net and followed Jesus. No question asked. When you go home, read this passage very um, carefully. They did not ask any question. And of course, the way Jesus called different people is different in different circumstances. But when God calls you as a Christian, let alone as a church leader, when God calls you, you are going to have to forfeit a lot of things in your life. You are going to have to turn away from the normal things you are used to and follow Jesus Christ in fellowship. These two disciples, Simon, Peter, Andrew, his brother, and of course, James and John did not ask any question. The problem with the world, the problem with this generation is that we ask too much questions. Too many. This is why we don't see prophets like Elijah. We don't see prophets like Jeremiah, like Ezekiel. This is why we don't see prophets like Micah. This is why we don't see prophets like Amos, like Hosea. Because people are busy scrutinizing whatever God tells them to do. And if God asks you to do something, if God calls you to follow him, it's costly. It costs a lot to follow God. It costs a lot to be a Christian. It costs a lot to be a church leader. These guys did not ask Jesus, who are you? How dare you call us to follow you in the middle of our profession? They left their boat and followed him. And the second part of the reading is interesting. These guys were with their father. This old boy is sitting with his sons in a boat. Here comes a rabbi in his scruffy clothes. Calls these two to follow them. And they left their old guy in the boat. <laughs> they left this old father with a high servant. And they followed Jesus. The interesting and important aspect of this message <coughs> is that if it wasn't for these four apostles and later the eight minus Judas, if it wasn't for these apostles, you and I will not be in this church today. This building will not be here today if it wasn't for the obedience of these four apostles. My dear friends, when Jesus calls you, there will be things in your life that you will be called to reconsider. There will be things in your life that you will be called to leave behind. And these things may often be the things that we love most, the things that we are so attached to. For the disciples, it was their profession. But what is Jesus calling you to leave behind and follow him? What is Jesus? calling you today to leave behind and follow him. Because if you do, not only are you going to benefit from following Christ, but you are going to chart out for many generations to come. Your generation, the people who will come 
immediately after your family to enjoy the benefits and the fruits of you following Jesus, of you obeying to follow Jesus and leaving behind whatever it is that you have to leave behind, some of which may be costly to leave behind. God is still calling disciples today. He is building his church. He calls for many. In fact, the book of Proverbs says that wisdom is in the marketplace. It's by the door. It's everywhere. It's crying out for the attention of many people. But people don't listen. People are busy scrutinizing the biblical literature. People are busy scrutinizing what men and women of God are saying and proclaiming. People are busy asking questions. And they are missing a life-changing opportunity to follow Jesus. Jesus called these four disciples. They left their net and followed him. The first two were in the middle of catching fish. The second two were mending their nets with their father, an old man. They left and followed Jesus. What is Jesus asking of you? To leave behind and follow him. And of course, for the disciples, for one, it was leaving their nets and catching fish. For the other, it was leaving their father plus the highest servant. For you and I, it will be different. What it is? That God is asking us to leave behind and follow him. Let's really consider that. And follow Jesus without asking any questions. Because there is always a blessing that comes in obedience. 